Today, we are going to cover a very simple but very important topic. How to do data entry properly in Excel. I know there are hundreds of videos on this topic, but have a look at this and you will know what you have been missing for so many years. The important part about data entry is to avoid it if possible. Don't do data entry. Try the data from picture option which is available on Excel mobile app. Create a blank new Excel file. Click on the insert menu and data from picture. It will start your camera, take a photograph, crop the photo and try. It has amazing OCR and it also understands rows and columns. Uh, what is OCR? Optical character recognition. Any scanner has OCR, right? But this is special OCR because it understands rows and columns as well. So it should give you an Excel file. Look at the number of changes required. And with few corrections, you should be able to eliminate data entry completely. If that works for you, great. I have tried it with three type of sheets and it works quite well, provided the printout is good. Remember, this does not work on handwritten text. It has to be printed. Sometimes, it is possible that you are creating an Excel file, you are doing some data entry, but you want data from other people as well. Then you are mailing multiple files to each other. They are also doing data entry, sending it back, copy paste, copy paste. If that is the kind of situation, don't use Excel for data entry. And that's the news, good news, bad news. You decide Excel is not designed for data entry. Excel is designed for data analysis. Yes, the entire world is using Excel, I know. But that's because we didn't know there is a better alternative. LIS is a part of Office 365. So if you have Office 365 and you need proper, structured, secure data entry, use LIS. I have a detailed, popular video on this. Have a look at it. Now, if both these options don't work for you and you have to enter data in Excel, let's see how to do it well. The commonest mistake done while doing data entry in Excel is that we think of why am I doing the data entry? because I want a report. You know how the report looks. And then you try to enter data in the same format as you expect the report to be. And that's the worst way of entering data. Here is an example. I'm trying to enter attendance data. So first column is employee number and second column is the date, one, two, three, four, five. And then we just enter present absent. That is the intended output. Earlier we had a register which looked like that. So we are thinking, oh, I will enter data like this in Excel. No, that's not the right way. So before you touch data entry, you have to know data must be entered in a clean, easy to analyze format. Now, what is clean data? Clean data is these 10 rules. Look at these 10 rules. And while entering data, make sure you enter it like this so that you don't have to do any data cleanup. After it is entered, you will be able to get reports instantly. If you are entering data like this, like a muster, then we are violating the rule. Every column must have a heading. Those dates, which are one, two, three, four, five, are not headings. Understand? They are dates. So actually, we just need three columns here for proper data entry. Employee number, date, and status. Once you have that, you can create any kind of report from it using pivot table and other features of Excel. So remember, data entry is not just data entry. It is clean data entry. Follow these rules. I have a separate video on how to follow the rules. And in case you get data which is not following the rules, how to clean them as well efficient. When you're entering unrelated pieces of data, many people finish one block and then put another unrelated block below it. Don't do that because if you hide some columns, the other block is also affected. So remember, when you have unrelated data to be entered in the same sheet, it should go diagonally. There should be no rows and columns shared amongst blocks of data. When you start data entry, of course, you'll have columns. So first put the column names and before you put anything, select all the columns and press Ctrl T or insert a table. It'll ask you, does your table have headers? And the checkbox is off there because it's only one row. It doesn't know whether there's a header or data. So enable that checkbox and then click OK. Now it's a table and then do data entry inside the table. There are lots of benefits of table. We'll not go into details of this, but trust me, any formatting, any validation, any formulas you put in table will be automatically copied. That much less effort for you. I have a separate video on why you should be using tables in Excel. Have a look at that as well. 
data entry is error prone and why is that so most people when they are entering data their eyes are busy looking at the paper from where they are doing the data entry their hands are busy typing and they don't necessarily cross check everything from paper has it gone correctly in excel that's where mistakes happen that's why sometimes we have makers and checkers so some people are entering data those are called makers and later on supervisors who are called checkers do random sampling of the data which is extra work so why not make sure that while entering data you don't make mistakes so how do you go about doing this right click on the ribbon we need to add a special button there so right click on the ribbon customize quick access toolbar and now open a drop down and say all commands wait a long list of commands will come down click on that search for a command called speak on enter and then click on add click okay now you will see that button on the custom toolbar or quick access toolbar now continue data entry as usual so i am looking at 12 i am typing 12 it will speak 12 12 now i am typing 45 45 now i am typing 49 51 ha huh? 51 i'll go and correct it that's how it works brilliantly in reducing mistakes but let's take another example where data entry is already done and you are the checker now what do we do you have the paper and you have the actual data entry one item at a time you are going to look here look there look here look there that's very irritating and bad for your neck as well besides when you turn the page or do page down there your sync will also be lost so bad idea how do you improve life of a checker like we customize the toolbar there are a couple of more buttons you should add one button is called speak cells so select the range click on speak cells now sometimes you want to check vertically sometimes horizontally so there are two more buttons which are called horizontal or vertical direction and of course you have to somehow stop speaking so there is a button called stop speaking cells you can also press escape so now as a checker select the range click on speak cell now you don't look at the screen you just look at the paper and very quickly and accurately cross check 3237 sydney australia 2019 signature travel f 30 102 now sometimes what happens i know that the format i am typing in is not optimal it is a cross tab means i have row headings column headings i know this is not the ideal format for analysis but for data entry it is convenient fair enough you do data entry in this format but before you analyze it convert that cross tab to tabula how do you do that you use power query un pivot option i have a detailed video on exactly how to do that i am sure you love it and find it useful in cases where you had to get data in cross tab format and now you want to convert it to tabula have a look the link is above so are you understanding we have not even gone into the data entry portion but everything which i am showing you is a concept you must imbibe whatever you do excel should help you you should not help excel that is done by choosing the right feature in the right place and you save time and you get better impact with lesser effort and while we are talking about who who is helping who i am helping you for sure so why don't you help me by clicking on the subscribe button liking it and sharing it with more people who i'm sure will benefit from this so now we have a table we are entering data rows columns all that is done now whenever you type the data depending on the kind of data you may want the cursor to move downwards or rightwards depending on whether you are putting one column at a time or one row at a time now whatever is the default you can change that so how do you change that well go to file options advanced and this is the direction after pressing enter experiment with it and depending on the situation choose the correct option the next topic is how to use a form it seems to be a very popular topic on youtube but it's quite simple really i have columns 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 of data but i prefer to fill it like a form okay not a big deal for that again you have to customize quick access toolbar and add the forms button all commands forms add now click anywhere inside the table click on the form that will create a separate window with the form each item or each field comes one below another and keep typing don't click on the new button that's a very common mistake i have seen data entry people do they are very good at keyboard but okay button new button they click on it you are a data entry person you are a keyboard expert don't take the trouble to move the hand away to mouse you notice that each button has an underline 
the new button as W means Alt W is new. Remember that. And not just here, anywhere in Windows, underline means Alt and that character. Now, when you are doing data entry in a form, you may sometimes want to search for something. So there is a criteria button. Now, when you click the criteria button, the same fields become sort of a search. So you type whatever you are searching for. You can even put asterisks as a wildcard. Then click next previous. It will cycle only through the filtered data. To come back to form mode, click on the form button now. So it's either in form mode or criteria mode. Use it when required. By the way, there is another brilliant way of converting a simple Excel table into a app, mobile app. Yes, without programming. If you have Office 365, any version of Office 365, you have something called Power App. So you put the Excel file with the structure in OneDrive. Start from there and it will create a mobile app with all the columns, with add, update, delete, all the user interface automatically created. A much more sophisticated form than what Excel gives you can be created in Power Apps. And once it is tested, you can just deploy it or release it to your organization. If you want me to create a detailed video on this topic, put it in comments. I'll be happy to create the video. Now some simple but important shortcuts you should know. Control T is table. Always work with tables in Excel. Sometimes we want current date, current type. So control semicolon is current date. Shift control semicolon is current type. Sometimes we want the value which is there in the cell above. There's no need to copy paste. Press control quote, double quote. It'll copy the value from above. How to add a row? Shift control plus. How to add a column? Control space bar to select the column and then shift control plus. Ah, there is one more generic shortcut. Any action you do and you want to do the same action again, press F4. Function key 4 is repeat last action or redo, reverse of undo. And that works across all of his products by the way. Finally, when you are doing data entry, there may be some validations. Validations is a topic by itself. I'll create a video for that. But broadly, validations are to make sure you don't make mistakes at the time of data entry. Correct it at source. Various types of validations are available depending on the type of data. Number, date, length of text and so on. There's a special one called list which gives you a drop down, which I'm sure you know how to do. If not, I'll create a video, let me know. And custom, I would say custom is the most powerful one. Custom accepts a formula. If that formula returns true, then whatever you have typed is valid. If that does not return true, it will say error. Remember to use custom when there is a complex validation situation. Now, one more very important thing. I have seen many people use validations and they don't put any message. So as a user who is typing something, I get an error. Okay, I know there is an error. But what is the right value? How will I know? So put the input message correctly and the error message correctly so that it's not just highlighting an error. It's telling you what is the right value to put. Another common problem is when you do data entry, you may be doing data entry. Someone else may be doing data entry. So suddenly you have same data in five files. Those could be five CSV files. This could be five Excel files or worse still five sheets in the same Excel file. But why are we entering this data? Because we want analysis. Now, before analysis, you have to take the trouble of consolidating that data. So, don't do that manually. I have a very detailed video on all variations of how to combine data from multiple sheets, multiple CSVs, multiple Excel files. Learn that and then optimize the data consolidation. So, with that, we come to the end of the data entry portion. Maybe I've missed something. Let me know. I'll be happy to create more video on this. If you found this useful, you already know what to do. And why are we doing all this? Because we want to analyze data. Now, you know, Power BI is the best way to do that nowadays. So if you want to learn Power BI, I have a very popular beginner course. It is completely free. Have a look at this video and I'm sure you will love it. So that's it for now. Thank you.